He's excited. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. Today we're having a look at the Lord of the Rings Battle for Pelindor Fields. Please tell me they're not going to use that. They're going to use that. They're going to use that. Of course, of course. <laughs> and you do something silly on camera and you expect it not to go out. Fair point. Silly little hobbit. I am really excited for this one. Okay, so this is the new two-player starter set for the Lord of the Rings from Games Workshop. Yeah. Uh, let's get start getting the a look Battle at it. of Pelennor Fields. Uh, no, is it yeah. ah Pelennor? Sorry, I said it's Pelennor. Pelennor. <laughs> yeah. The Battle of Pelennor Fields between yeah. the forces of good and the forces of Mordor. You're not saying Mordor is evil. Ah, no, Mordor are evil. Most definitely <laughs> evil. Okay. Uh, this is actually the box where we were a little concerned about the, the cover art. I still have that same concern. I'm going to say that right now. I I know people have, but the, I do not have as big a problem. I do see why people say that, but I think it's hitting all the right notes. It is, you've got the massed armies. You've got the, the idea of mm. the two forces. You have got the great epic figures overlooking the battlefield. And the, the touch I particularly like is Minas Tirith, half in shadow, half in light. Yeah. But I do see why people have some issues. For, for me, it, it's a departure from what they normally do, which is just an epic snapshot on a cover for a box. Any box you see in 40k, it's either artwork or something of something epic happening. Uh, the old Lord of the Rings, it was always miniatures on the table. This is just a bit of a departure, which I think is a bit jarring for me. Mm. Well, right. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, okay, so we will flip the box. And have a look at what comes in the box. So, uh, we've got the... Ooh, you've actually got these guys. Yeah, the Army, Army of the Dead. Of the Dead. They're there as allies for the Rohirrim who are yeah. in this. So, what the, the two armies, you have the Forces of Good, mm -hmm. which is King Theoden leading the charge of the of Rohan. Mm -hmm. uh, their charge... You know, this is the moment in the Battle of Pelennor Fields where things are looking lost for Gondor. Yeah. And then suddenly... Rohan shows up, and then uh, Aragorn and the Army of the Dead show up. I so see. you have the allies on one, the ally forces of good on one side, mm. and on the other you've got Mordor with the Moran and orcs, and yep. you've got all led by the Witch King. Yeah, well, there's there's the Witch King on the Nazgul, yeah. which is nice. Uh, opening the box, it's Games Workshop. You get a ton of plastic in this box to get you up and running. Right, Sam, I'm going to pass this to you, because okay. you probably know what the units are that we're looking at, so if you pick them out well, and pass them to me. First of all, we've got some Moran and Orcs, which are nice because most of them seem to be one piece. Alright, so we've got guys with spears, guys with spears with mm. three points on them, uh, we have a guy with a sword, lots uh, of different shields and stuff, which is quite nice. Yeah. Now, the great thing, uh, spears are really useful in the game, as they allow you to support uh, combat. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that basically you're, you've got two people fighting in a single combat rather than just the one person at the front. I am liking the different mix of weapons, because we've got different spears and long weapons, but we've also got like swords, axes... And they've all got that nice rough forged feel yeah. that you expect from the Urukai. Uh, no, these aren't the Urukai. Okay. These are the Morin and Orcs of Mordor. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Urukai yeah. are actually uh, very well disciplined and well forged. Their stuff ah, is right. So they, well these made. are more of the, the rabble. Uh, Morin and Orcs are more uh, elite. They have a bit harder armor, they're a bit harder to take all down. Right. So we get three sprues thereof, uh, three identical sprues, but once you actually have these guys in the units and mixed up, yeah. you'll never really notice those duplicate sculpts. One point you actually mentioned there, uh, the variety of weapons, Yeah, that's super important in the game. Really? Yeah, because different weapons allow you to do different actions, different abilities. Yeah. Uh, so having that uh, mix can really help in the game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, important question. This is not a rank and file game, this is a skirmish battle style game, yeah? It's a skirmish battle style game, and it, because of that, it can be... Uh, it, can, it can start with... A game with just one war band each, mm -hmm. very skirmish level, and you can build that up into massive battles as well. Okay. All right, uh, next up. Yeah, we have some of the Rohan riders. Ah, yeah. okay. I like riders the fact that you've got nice big pegs on these to actually mount them to the horses. Mm. Uh, so having a look at them, you've here. got the. Oh, this is interesting. The middles of the shields are out. I'm guessing there must be a peg on the arm. Ah, yeah, with the, the shield boss on the forearm. That's a nice mm. touch. This, I would say, is going to be very good for our younger gamers out there because they're not having to figure out where exactly do I place this. It's sort of guiding you. 
Forget the Yogi game is as good for me. <laughs> so we've got guys with axes, guys with spears, guys with bows. Yeah. Uh, uh, the... Two sprues thereof. Yeah. Uh, being able to ride and shoot is very useful for the Rise of Rohan. Mm. And a lot of them have throwing spears as well. Oh, okay. So when they're charging in, they're getting those hits off first. Or, yeah. Which is really useful. And uh, The actual horses themselves? Yeah, the Rohan is nothing without its horses. Yeah. Now, horses are something that's very, very difficult to actually sculpt and make look good. Mm -hmm. I know uh, some of the older sculpts Games Workshop have done for horses have been slid in the past. These actually look quite good. So well, I will say these are older sculpts. These are from 2002, I believe. These are still better than some of the other horse sculpts I've seen Games Workshop do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, there's at least a nice sense of motion to them. Mm. Well, and the, then yeah. a nice variation to the different poses of the horses. Yeah. Well, this is the moment when... Rohan starts charging. If you remember Return of the King, that wonderful moment where Theoden gives his speech and they charge into the back ranks of the orcs laying uh, siege to Gondor. Uh, it's it's nice to have cavalry in the box. It's giving you different yeah. elements of the game to begin with, which yeah. is always good. And then you've got uh, some Rohan on foot. Uh, I always like the armor of Rohan. Mm. You know, it just it feels nice. So we have our guys again. You've got. The shields with the, the boss removed so that you can locate them on your guys. You've got archers, you've got spearmen. Uh, we have more spearmen with swordsmen here. Uh, do we get any characters in this box? Uh, yes, you the, do. For the Rohan side? Yes, you do. There's one character for each army. Okay. I'll come to them in a bit, I'm sure. The details on these are quite nice. Mm. They're very simple uh, figures in that most of them are one p single piece, mm. more or yeah, less. It's, it's the old thing of... Uh, it's something I've seen companies struggle with for years. They either do a very modular kit, which is mm. quite static, or they do an incredibly modular or an incredibly uh, dynamic kit, but it's single pose. Mm. Uh, I generally would fall into the camp of I like single pose minis. Yeah, it, and these ones do give you a nice variety of poses. Mm -hmm. They, they are nice models. Uh, the spears a little bent on one or two of them, but that's ah, easy to a, fix. Touch of hot water. That's yeah. plastic. Now we get one I know a lot of people were very excited to see in this box. The Army of the Dead. Ah, okay, so we get two sprues of these, two identical sprues. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a lot of duplication, but because the poses are so simple, it's, it's quite wise of them to just double down yeah. and give you more plastic in the box. So we have them here. I love the designs of the shields and stuff that they have for these. They feel old, broken and battered. Same for the weapons and the actual... The guys themselves just look really, really great. And there's a lot of variation within these as well. So once you get these down on the field and start mixing them up, you're not really going to see that duplication all that much. Mm. Now the the army of the dead on the in the game are they're scary, <laughs> especially if you've got a particularly tough army, um, because their weapons don't they you don't roll against their defense. Oh, you go against their courage. You're you're striking at their spirit. Yeah. And most people's courage is not going to be as high as their yeah. defense. Can you do a full army of those? Yes, you can. Okay, that that would tempt me just because I know I could paint them in zero time at all. Yeah, they have one character, the King of the Dead, mm -hmm. and then you can have some cavalry. But at present, I think you can only buy the cavalry in single miniature blisters. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Maybe they'll change that. To do with yeah. it. Maybe they'll be changing that now that they're revisiting the range. Yeah, uh, I hope so. It's a great army to have. Yeah. Uh, what have we got? Well, Next. here for Mordor. Ah, uh, the troll. Yes. They have a cave troll. So this is bigger, slightly more complicated kit, but is there two variants on this, or is it just the one? It's a Mordor troll. The Mordor troll. Mm -hmm. I think there might be two. I can't quite remember. Well, you see, I'm seeing... Quick glance at the back of the box here. <laughs> Don't pour everything out. Ah! Okay, so the miniature itself... He is big. one more door troll. Okay, he is big. Well, I, I'm seeing a couple of options here. So you've got the the drumsticks here, main body front and back here. You've got the the variations for the head here, and then you've got the drums here. But what you also have on this, I swing this around once more, is you have weapon options. So you could actually do this guy as either the big drummer or with the weapons, which mm. is a nice touch. Uh, you've then got big shield. Big armor breastplate, shoulder plate, 
and the usual spikes and bits that you're going to stick out and around him. You've also got open and closed hands as well. You've also got him with his huge spear. And then you've got the different arm options that you're going to attach his hands to. So it's nice to see that in this kit, you're getting essentially a full kit here. Yeah. That you can actually spec up the way you want. Yeah. And of course, as I've said, uh, weapon options are very important in mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings. So having those, those options can change things up as well as the look and feel of oh, the, yeah, the miniature. Yeah. That and if, if you double down and you and your mate grab two of this kit, you can just say, okay, I've now got twice the force and I can change up my troll. Mm, indeed. And here we have the leader of the Mordor faction, the Witch King of Angmar on his Nazgul. Ah. Uh, oh, his wow. fell beast. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to come across really well on camera, but look at the wings on this. See that vein detail that they've sculpted in here? If you just see the light reflecting off it, that texture is gorgeous work. I, I particularly like the scales on the back of the beast itself. Yeah, the the scales you can see running down the tail and along further segments of the body. Mm. It is gorgeous work. It also comes with a very nice scenic base. Uh, and you've got, I think this is the reins for the rider. Yeah. Alright, so if I put this out of the way and I grab the other sprue, you've got the Witch King himself, so front and back. Uh, you've then got his sort of flaming magical sword. Wow. Uh, you've got two more sword options, more of the reins, and then you've got the main body of your Nazgul with its legs and the actual top part with the skills that Sam was on about there. Yeah. Now, I will say, wow. I think the, the pose on this model isn't particularly exciting. It captures him flying through mm. uh, over the battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't really tell you, show a picture of it right now because it would mean... Uh, it's all right, we'll, we'll do a part two, we'll see yeah. him built. Yeah, he, he, it's not the most exciting pose I've seen for that one. Uh, for the Fern Beast, there's a very good one where the base is... it. The tail is what connects it to the base, and yeah. it's leaning down. That's one I particularly like, but you do get the imposing feel of the leader swooping overall. Yeah. Well, it's... It... <sighs> It's something every sculptor has to do. They have to choose the snapshot, that moment in time where they want to show the miniature. Mm. So if if they're trying to catch that that overarching menace of him just hovering over the battlefield, maybe that's what they were aiming for. Uh, sometimes sculpts work, sometimes they don't. But I suppose that's mm. that's down to personal preference on the player side. For this being a starter kit, this is designed for someone who has maybe never played with miniatures before. So they want to make it as simple and easy an experience for them, and as good an experience for them as they can. And there's no, no doubt about it, the Witch King is a cool character. Yeah. I hate him. As a, <laughs> as a player, I hate him. He is a hobbit killer. <laughs> soon as... Uh, soon as oh, He's an the, everything killer. Yeah, he is an everything killer. <laughs> but as so, soon as one of these creatures gets into the lines of my hobbits, it's just bowling for hobbits. Although that rule, uh, the... Uh, Things like the throw rule and everything mm. that it's monsters have. It's there, but it's been changed. Uh, I, I have dug into the rules. All right, who's one, our last miniature? Well, I want to say one thing before I hand this over. This is Theoden. Yeah. And he's very interesting because all the other models we've seen in this set mm -hmm. are previous sculpts. Yeah. They have existed in the range for quite some time. Yeah. Theoden is the first new sculpt. Right. Now, uh, he's on a horse. Mm-hmm. Of so, course. Oh. Let's see. Big, heavily armoured. I love the scribe work that they've done in the, the sort of barding around the horse. Mm. Uh, you've got his... Oh, actually, there's a couple of ones here. Because you've got a couple of standing guys here. Uh, you've got part of Theoden riding here. Someone else standing no, that's, here. That is Theoden. It, there's a variant for him on his horse and ah, off his horse. I see. I see. I hadn't realised that. I thought it was going to be his daughter. No, no. <laughs> actually killed the Witch King, because I would have loved to have seen her in this set. Uh, we've then got... Ah, so we've got uh, doubled up shields for standing and riding. We've got doubled up swords, standing and riding. We've got them holding the reins. That's a nice touch that you don't really see mm -hmm. too often. And then we've got lots of other components here. So we've got different head variants uh, for him as well. So you've got ones within the armoured helmets, and then you've got one bareheaded. Uh, yeah, and this I'm not sure what it is. Possibly the horse's mane. Man. Possibly the horse's mane. Yeah, that looks like the mane to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is going to make for a very interesting build. There is a lot of stuff here. A lot of it's quite simple. 
but just the sheer volume of what you and your friends are getting is very nice. I particularly like that the rank and file ones are mm. simple, lots of single piece, two piece models. Mm -hmm. uh, that me, whereas the the monsters and the heroes have a bit more going on. Yeah, with Lord of the Rings and the Middle Earth skirmish game. It is a, the Middle Earth battle game. It is a game about heroes. That yeah. is where the focus is for mm. the game. All right, next thing out of the box. Just now, this. This is a bit of a gripe for me, Games Workshop. This is something you guys have been doing a bit more in your two-player start sets. I like that it's here. But the thing I don't like is if you and your friend are wanting to go home to separate homes and start building your stuff, you only get one of these in the box. Oh, I see your problem. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's fun to build the, the kit together, and I'm sure that's probably what you're intending, but I would like to have two of these in the box, two sets of instructions. Well, it's easy enough these days. You just snap a photo of the, of the um, with your phone. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's just it's those little, little details sometimes can sort of snag me on a kit. Now, there are two books, but I want to talk about them a bit more. Okay. So, I know you all like to see... Uh, tons we, haven't, of we, haven't, we haven't done that gag in years. Oh, good. It's been a while since I was on an unboxing. <laughs> there we've got the dice, just some yeah. red and green dice. Yeah, which is it's nice because color coded for your factions green yeah. for the good, red for the bad. And here you're measuring sticks. Yep, so measuring sticks, you get two thereof, again color coded, which is nice. Yeah. A nice little touch, both of them have some designs for their respective faction working yes, through yeah. them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can, if I go closer, I can maybe feel this. So yeah, you've got the sort of faction symbols in there, the Mordor and yeah. the Rohan. Yep. Very nice. Now the the Games Workshop have come out with a whole bunch of accessories for the game. So cool oh. dice, cool measuring sticks in the shape of different weapons from oh. the series. Uh, I think they're all going up to pre-order the same time as this. Gotcha. Yeah. And then we get... Now this is new. This is a token set. Ah, so what? Is this for like different statuses and yeah. stuff on the battlefield? They... It's... For stuff that has always existed in the game, mm -hmm. but it's now there to help you keep track of things. Like, uh, it helps you keep track of which heroic combats have been declared at the start of the yeah. turn. We've got cavalry charging, half movement, heroic moves, heroic strikes. Uh, yeah. Channeled transfix? Transfix, yeah, that's a power that the, uh, the Witch King can do. Cool. There are um, ma there is of course magic in the Lord yeah. of the Rings, and transfix is that's a painful move. And channeling channeling it is when you get to spend a point of might to increase its effect. Okay, all right. Well, uh, that's everything that's in the box. We haven't shown the the books because I'm sure Sam wants to actually have a, a good long chat and wind on about those and how yeah. they're laid out. Yeah. So I think we'll go away. We'll get stuck into building these. Well, um, well, well let's, let's just mention what books you get. In well, the box. you obviously Quick. get your main rule book. Yep, you get your rules manual. Yep, which is this one here. So, really nice with Gandalf the White on the front. I don't know, again, the, the design elements that they've used for this feels a little off to what they normally do. It feels less epic than what they've normally aimed for. And then on the inside, you're going to get everything you need to learn to play. Yeah, it's all very well laid out, I think. Yeah. And then our other book. The other book is the Battle of Pelennor Fields Scenarios and Profile. So this is a getting started guide. Yeah. It, it doesn't have the rules of the game itself in it, mm -hmm. but it does have a series of escalating scenarios mm -hmm. to take you through the Battle of Pelennor Fields. All right, well, uh, Sam, I'm going to say this. Seeing as this is your bag, this is your happy place, Yeah. you can build it all. Yay! So everybody, we're going to take a quick break here and we'll be right back and we will possibly see a fried Sam in part two. Okay, everybody, we're back for part two. The forces are built. Now, uh, I'm going to say this now, there was a bit of division of labor in this box because you yeah. get a mountain of miniatures. So Sam, you built pretty much all of the good guys. I did. I built pretty much all of the bad guys and Theoden. <sighs> it was yeah. some work. That took a lot of time getting these together. It, it's not difficult. They're, no, no, they're no. very easy models to go together. Basically, with the, the I think the most complicated skill was just like, you know, sticking a shield on. Yeah, and well, then for, sticking for a base what on. you built. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, for me, I had the, the three character sort of pieces. So I did the troll, I did the, the yeah. witch king, and I did Theoden. Uh, I will say, uh, the only sculpt from this that looks as if it's brand spanking new designed by Games Workshop, I could be wrong here, 
It's there, dude. Yeah. And I say that because it's the, the mechanical way he actually goes together. You know the way Games Workshop sculpts now? You have specific components that go on in a specific order, otherwise you're kind of clicking and trying to force them in and around other components. That's what makes me believe he's one of a, the he newer is. sculpts. He is. Okay. He is, uh, as far as I'm aware, he's the only new new sculpt in the box. I see. Uh, but he is a beautiful sculpt, and people oh, yes. have been wanting this model for quite some time before. Yeah. Uh, the only Theoden I think you could get was him at Helm's Deep. Ah, I see. And this is him at Pelennor Field, so I see. it's uh, full. I like the, the cavalry piece is beautiful. I love the way they've done the reins. Now, I, I actually have a, a little bit of a flaw here that I need to repair the... This has came apart, but that's just a matter of a dot of glue and yeah. just hold it in place. Uh, details, absolutely gorgeous. The way it's designed goes together, absolutely great. Uh, the foot and mounted version in the same box is really, really nice to have, and the details are super duper crisp on these. Hmm. In general, uh, the the foot soldiers are also very nice models if we uh, take a few... Well, that's not a well, foot soldier, they, uh, that's, yeah, that's the, a cavalry. Man. Yeah, well, the, the, the linemen, if we're, so yeah. there's... Um, behind them, there's a Morin and an Orc. Uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, like the the cavalry, you've got a good mix of weapons in there. So if mm. we just focus on them, so if you give me one of each type of weapon for them, well, so we've got we guys go. with spears, guys with bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. Although how ineffective bow and arrow from a horse, but horseback could be, I can only imagine. Hugely effective, as someone who has played against Rohan can tell you. Uh, yeah, but I mean, in real life, this would probably be incredibly oh, no. effective. Uh, ineffective. <laughs> Yeah, have you have you not riding seen, from a moving animal? Have you not seen Mongol horse archery? No, done? it is incredible. Okay, fair yeah. enough. I I just imagine having a, a um, living creature beneath you that's bouncing you around, trying to actually stay on target. That's got to be some insane skill. It's skillful. It takes a lot of skill. And uh, then we have yeah axemen. Yeah. Now, as I've said before, each of the uh, weapons have different abilities you can utilize in the game like with an axe you can use piercing strike and mm. stuff like that i think they have actually changed up the the weapon uh the special strikes you can do a bit and they've added a new uh a new point system so that you can convert your models slightly yeah. to give them the equipment you want them to have right which well, is very useful you're getting 12 cavalry in the box yeah that's pretty damn good mm. You're also getting all of the, the foot soldiers. So yeah. let's start cycling through some of them and some of their weapons. Well, now, these are older sculpts, yes? Yes, these are all older sculpts. And I will say that some of them are starting to show their age. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you with what, what I mean with one of the um, Warriors of the Dead in a, in a second. Well, one of the things I'm seeing is the details are just that, that little bit softer. Mm. You know, you can tell that maybe it's the fact that the moulds are older or something like that. I don't know how often Games Workshop actually replace their moulds. But you can tell this has been a, a flat cast that you're then sticking the shield onto to give it a little bit more of a, a three-dimensional appearance. When you lay these out on the field, they still look great. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Rohan is one of the most eye-catching armies on the table. Yeah, but I mean, like... Once you actually get some paint down on these, that'll help a lot. Mm. But it's it's getting them to that stage, because you do get a lot in here. I will say, one thing I did notice is, you see if you and your mate got two boxes of this. Yeah. The only miniature you'll not be able to refield is Theoden. Mm. Because the Witch King and the Troll come with different options. So the Witch King, you can do it as the Witch King, or you can do it as a normal ring wraith. Yeah. The Troll has the drums, it has... Axes, hammers, different types of armor, the shield, no shield, shoulder armor, really, really good. Yeah, they uh, for the larger ones like that, they are fantastic. Yeah, and they they do give you a lot of options. But here are two uh, warriors of the dead. I okay. just wanted to show it. But first of all, I love the army of the dead. They're one yeah. of my favorite sub factions in the game, and that they, I think they can now be taken as an ally rather than just like units for Minas Tirith. Mm. Uh, so they can be a full force. Uh, that they're he could be a captain, mm -hmm. so the the guy with the shield. Yeah. Now this guy with the spear is what I mean by some of them are showing their age a bit. Yeah. If you look at the way the spear is held, uh, yeah. rotated a bit further, uh, a bit further around, please, a little further. There you go. You see that big flat space where the arm is, uh, yeah, meeting the torso. Oh yeah, yeah, but that that's just the the connection point they have to do. For me, what shows its age is actually the way the cloth is done. Mm -hmm. so this it's nice you can tell it's cloth but it's a lot less dynamic than what we see games workshop sculpting and doing and designing these days mm. but there's nothing to say it's not good i mean well, like whenever you look at the other guy 
there's a nice bit of motion to it, but it's just it's less cinematic. When you say um, less dynamic, I think one of the reasons is it's Lord of the Rings. It's yeah. it's true proportion. It's a little more realistic than um, what than thinking, Age of Sigma. What I'm thinking more of is there's more like curls and smooth folds to it. Here they they hang a lot more. It's mm. as if the I know they're trying to do like a different type of fabric. It's not held up by magic or anything, but it just it feels it feels less of a cinematic touch. It's you can tell it's an older sculpt because back then they were maybe still learning those skills or maybe they're using different mm. sculptors now. You know, so it's definitely got a different style. Yeah. Uh, so is that every unit that you would have for? The rule here and so that is all, all for the the good side, yes. Okay, uh, b- barring Thaden himself, who we showed off. Yeah, uh, right. Let's move on to the evil side. Wahahaha. <laughs> so uh, now you spoke to me and said you weren't so much a fan of this particular no, pose. No, I'm not the biggest fan of this particular um, Nazgul pose. Now I quite like it because if I if I can turn it the right way, the details are great, and you see the this here. You've actually mm-hmm. got a ball joint here that actually lets you pose the Witch King or the Ring Wraith as you wish. So you could have them tilt it up, tilt it down, left and right a little bit. Whenever this all goes together, it actually works really, really well as well. Because you've got a couple of different options for the head here that you could actually swap out to actually change mm. your posing slightly. Uh, other than that, it goes together pretty much as is. And I do like the fact that you're getting a scenic base with this. Yeah. Uh, it is a great miniature. Yeah. I do think it is a very, very yeah. good model, and, and the sculpt is good. It goes together really well. Yeah, and mechanically in the game, it hit. It's hard. <laughs> uh, I, I just happen. There's another Nazgul where it's um, balanced on the tail that I really like. <sighs> now you see, so, that's something Games Workshop have been doing recently that I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, is they'll have miniatures that are meant to be flying or floating. And they're held to the base by tiny, teensy, weensy little connection points. There might be a lot of them, and that gives it strength. But I look at it and go, oh, that's just going to break someday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, and now we're on to the Mordor Troll. Yeah. So you have tons of options for this guy. So you can see I gave him the full helmet. I actually like this because the helmet is actually not sculpted onto the head. It's a separate component. Oh, really? So you could actually have him as no helmet, helmet or the ones with the big fanning tops on them. Mm. Uh, you've got this arm here, which comes down and actually cuts at the wrist, so you can change out your weapons. And then you've got this side here with the big shield, so you can do it with the shield, without the shield. There's also an additional armor piece that can come down here. You've got two options for the actual chest plate. So you've got this full one, and one that just comes down across half. You've essentially got four head options, because you've got the bare one, the helmeted one, and the one with the fans. And there's a bit of posability here because this is all peg and socket joints. You then have another set of arms that actually come off from here and you don't put the armor plate on. You've got two peg holes at the front at the belly to put the two drums on. And you've got two arms that are cut off at the wrist that you can put the drumsticks onto. Mm. <gasps> and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, there's a lot going on with the monsters. Yeah, and the details on this one, yes, you can tell it's a little older. The details are that tiny bit softer. I still think it can look great. Mm. Definitely. Next and up. Getting, oh, what's next up then? Well, you've got all of the... Of the course, the Morin and Orcs, yeah. You have three big sprues of these. 36 miniatures in total. Yeah, with every weapon option under the sun. Now, one of the things I like that they've done is, so you've got a lot of these guys that are single pose, just holding spears and stuff. But you then come to some of them with the shields. And so not this guy, but actually this guy. When you take him off the sprue, he doesn't have a shield on him. Mm-hmm. So you can either do him like this without a shield, or pick from a selection of shields that are cast onto the, the sprue to give you that variation in there. That is the same with the uh, Army of the Dead. Uh, with yeah. the Army of the Dead. Less so the Ro- Rohan, because yeah. they all have the uh, the boss. Yeah, them. now there's, there's one sculpt actually here you've given me I wanted to pick out, which is this guy, mm-hmm. that I kind of have a little bit of a bugbear with. Oh. So you, you see this shield? Yeah, you see around the top of it. Oh uh, yeah, see that yeah. big, just broad expanse of nothingness. Yeah, that's it's a little unfortunate. Same around the back. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. There is an absolute shed load of different guys in here. So if I start yeah. just grabbing a few random ones, while the Moran and Orcs are more of the elite of Mordor, they they are still a rabble of orcs. So. Oh yeah. yeah. I do like that there is more variety in the bits and pieces they're showing. Yeah. And you do when they're all together, 
you do get the feel of this big rabble of yeah. orcs with pointy sticks. Yeah. Now, I will admit, I have been tempted to actually play uh, the Middle Earth game mm. a few times. And the one that has always jumped out to me, can you guess? Go Which ahead. Force? It's actually been either Isengard or Rohan. Uh, Isengard are one of my favourite forces, mm. and I'm actually buying a force. Are they're, you? Yeah, they okay, are. Okay, so one I'm not my, playing Isengard. They're one of my favourite armies uh, because Grima Wormtongue. <laughs> Just because Grima Wormtongue. Uh, but... looks, looks like I'm going to have to muster the Rohirrim. Yeah, oh, Rohan. I had to do the quote, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Mo- the Rohirrim are a pain to fight against. Okay, they are so nippy good. and they hit hard. Cavalry charges yeah. knock. Uh, uh, not just them, but any, any cavalry charge yeah. knock people prone. I see. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Let's actually talk rules a little bit because you've yes. had the book at home with you. And is this a brand new edition of the, the game? This, For all intents and purposes, yes, this is a brand new edition of the game. There haven't been... There have been a hu- few huge changes, right. um, mostly in terms of how you construct your force. Right. Uh, so is it more of a 1.5 rather than a 2.0? Yeah, I'd probably say it's that. More of a tidy up. I, I, I did a compare and contrast between this and the previous uh, mm-hmm. rule book, and there are sections that are verbatim, word for yeah. word, yeah. Uh, for, between the two. Yeah. Uh, and other bits where they've just tweaked things slightly for clarification. Mm-hmm. There are some uh, changes, though, that have rebalanced things like... Um, mm-hmm. They've changed spells a bit. They've yeah. added some new spells, nice. which are going to be very fun to play with. Um, oh, I'm going to have to try and find some... Where'd they go? <laughs> Where'd they go? Well, I will say there's not just um, the rules in this. You're also getting, I think, 11 different scenarios to help you play out. All right, well, new here, siege rules. Here's a question for you, Sam. Just roughly looking at the sizes of these forces, would I need to add much to actually start going to, like, tournaments and stuff? No. No? This is a tournament-ready lit army, I would say. What, both sides? Oh, okay. yeah. That's, uh, that's it, actually really impressive for a two-player starter set. It's not... I, I don't know if it would be a compet- tournament competitive list. Yeah. But it is tournament-ready. For lo- maybe low, low, lower point scale. Okay, well, what I'm liking is... It's actually teaching you the game at that level to begin with. So, I mean, like, there are some games out there where you'll start with a few miniatures, right? And you think, okay, I've got the rules down. I can now do this. And then you get your force together and go to a tournament. And it's just like, okay, there's way too much to manage here. Oh, God, what's going on? Oh, no. You know, this I like. Yeah, this is very easy to get into. Mm. And uh, I'll I, have to get a game against you. Oh, I'm up for it. My my first game, someone just lent me an Isengard list, and I had the best tournament experience I'd ever really? had. I'd, I'd had one game of it before months before, so I learned at the tournament. Ah, okay. I learned how to play at the tournament. But yeah, as for spells, this thing, I think Protection of the Valar is a new one, mm-hmm. and um, it means that tar- the target may not be targeted by an enemy's magical powers or special rules, so... That, that could be very useful for getting some protection from this guy's black dart. <laughs> I hate uh, black dart. Uh, what is black dart, for those of us who don't know? Oh, well, I'll, since I'm on the spe- spells... Yeah, yeah, we may as well have a look at them. Yeah, it's a mysterious power that thrusts itself into the flesh of its target. Only the Dark Lord's most deadly of servants possess this means of murder from afar. Okay. So basically it's death by death by spell. Uh, so basically he creates a, a small dark bolt of energy and just goes, ha! Yeah, it's a me- it, uh, you shoot one enemy model and the target immediately suffers one strength nine hit. Okay, so I could hit Theoden with that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this, is a, this is a hero killer move. Yeah. Uh, it's channel, so if you spend a point of might to channel it, that, that's still a thing. Uh, a wounding hit will cause D3 wounds rather than just one. Ah, okay. Yeah, so very useful stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. There's a few more spells of particular note. Uh, something I I really like is there's a little bit of a change to how heroes work. Mm. Now heroes are the main focus of Lord of the Rings. Right. That's is this why you do so badly with your Hobbit force. No, because uh, Hobbit Hobbit heroes are super cheap. Oh crap! So the way heroes work. You have your basic stat line, yeah. and then heroes get three others. They get their might, 
uh-huh. their will and their fate. Right. Might is used for doing heroic actions. I'll yeah. talk about that in so a bit. Stabbing. Yeah. Uh, no, not just stabbing. Stabbing really, really well. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, there is a, a thing a thing called heroic stab now. <laughs> um, oh, I just I just imagine like Samwise standing in front of you know somebody and just going, "I'm gonna stab you now." <laughs> You're not far wrong. Uh, then there was, yeah, and then there's will, which is used for spell casting yeah. or resisting spell cast or helping with courage tests. I'm guessing hobbits have low will. Yeah, but they also have magic resistance ones, so they're they're getting mad. Uh, they they basically get a free will dice to resist spells. Oh, all right, just all the time without spending anything. Yeah. Okay. Because and th- those three stats, do you spend them as you're doing? Yes, them? you do. They're spendable points. Okay. So, uh, if you want to do call a heroic combat, which lets you do your, if you particularly want to get this one combat done out of priority. Yeah. So if you've lost priority for a turn, mm. but you want to be assigning that combat, you want to be calling who's fighting who in that combat, yeah. your hero can call heroic combat, right. and that they spend one might to okay. do that. That's interesting. Yeah. So they are spendable skills. A new thing is, they used to be heroic abilities mm. that pretty much everyone have. Now there's the three... Je- general ones that everyone has, like heroic combat, heroic move... Heroic stab. Uh, that, that's not a generic... That's not a, a general one everyone has. Okay. But they've added ones that only specific heroes can use. Mm. Uh, for instance, actually, be a good one to reach over and bring this over. Yeah, so your beginner's guide. Yeah, because this has some of the uh, character's own stats. So if we look at uh, Theoden... Um, okay, I'm not sure if I can bring this well, let, Let's see if we can. We'll see. Yeah. So, here he is. And here are his heroic actions that are specific to him. So, heroic march, heroic strike, and heroic... Challenge. Challenge. Yeah, heroic challenge is a new one that lets you call challenges between heroes. Okay. So you get those fantastic moments where the armies part and the two heroes have to fight one another. Yeah. And by, by beating them, by beating the person you've uh, challenged, you can get might back. Ah, I see. So that's very useful. Uh, the Witch King has some heroic actions there. Uh, well. Yeah, so he has heroic channeling, mm-hmm. heroic strike, heroic strength, heroic challenge. Uh, he's yes. also got his magical powers listed as well. So he's got transfix, compel, and black dart. Yeah, so the... what are transfix and compel? You <laughs> asked me that after I've closed the thing. You Tran- should have kept it open. Yeah. Transfix is basically, you. they can't do anything. You've mm. frozen them in fear. Yeah. Uh, comp- compel, you can make them do a move action or something. Mm-hmm. I'm Trying to remember, I'm not an evil player. Okay. I mean, I'm an evil player, but I'm not an evil side player. Uh, and Black Dark, we've neutral, already gone on. I think. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Wait, no, no. Wrong franchise. Wrong IP. Yeah. The <laughs> other interesting thing about uh, heroes is they now have a tier. Right. There are three ways to play the Middle Earth game. You can play uh, match. Uh, you can play open play, where you all just bring anything you like onto the board. Yeah. You can play narrative, where you're recreating some of the scenarios and moments, or you can play match play, which is where you're going with the points cost. Yes. Now, the way it's always worked is rather than just, you know, like in Warhammer or something, you buy a unit of yeah. thing, and then you can upgrade a guy to a champion. Yeah. You would buy a hero, and then you allocate warriors to that hero you buy their war band ah so you're you're basically having him gathering a group of followers who will actually work with him yes gotcha. exactly it's right. all about leading or right. driving the force important question where do i find my points cost uh with the specific stat lines of each one they're not no no in no, 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 no i mean where do i find the actual physical unit entries is there specific books I there need to is pick up? going to be a book there okay, are going to be um, two books uh up for pre-order i think Today, since this is going up, yep. uh, they are the armies of the Lord of the Rings and the armies of the Hobbit. Ah, so it's just everything in one place. That's yes. nice. That's and can you play place. armies from the Lord of the Rings versus the armies from the yes, Hobbit? Yes, you can. Okay, that's interesting. Now, this is uh, I'll get to that, actually, in a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if we can show this off, we have the different heroic tiers. I can try. Yep. 
so I didn't think I'd be showing off any pages in this, but yeah, now we've got talking. Up. Up. I, I, I'm now, I'm now get, so I'm getting really that's infused. Each of these, yeah, yeah. So you have the heroes of legends. They will be figures like uh, Theoden. Yeah. And what a hero of legend means is they can take, I think, up to eighteen people in their warband. Gotcha. And then as you go down, you get less people in your warband. So a hero of uh, heroes of legend also get a last stand yeah. special rule. Yes, yeah, so you've got minor heroes, so I'm guessing Merry and Pippin. Yep, yeah, or and independent heroes who can join... They're the only heroes that can join other warbands. Ah. So someone like a captain of... Yeah. Uh, you know, would just be a uh, minor hero. Uh, yeah. An unnamed captain of Gondor would be a yeah. minor hero. So, uh, Wormtongue would be an independent hero. Yeah. Eowyn is a minor hero. Uh, Narzog is a hero of Fortitude. Uh, Toriel is a hero of Valor, and Aragorn is a hero of Legend. Yeah. So just they they actually have just a little list down the side of the page. Yeah. So that that actually uh, is a new addition for the for this mm. one, and I think that makes sense because yeah. it it means that you have got your heroes of Legend acting as the rallying cry with yeah. their big units being led behind them. Yeah. So it is that moment of Aragorn in front of the gates. You know, but it is not this day! Yes, exactly. You know, those so, moments you're looking for. Yeah, that is what Lord, the uh, Middle-Earth Middle Earth strategy battle game is mm. all about. It's those heroic moments. Yeah. Although, for anyone out there who has not watched Lord of the Rings, I don't know where you've been living for the last few years, you know, possibly on a desert island, you know, like Tom Cruise Castaway. Uh, or not Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely go and check it out because some of the quotes from the movie and some of the, the stories from the set are always very entertaining oh yeah you know I think two of my favourites uh, Alessio Cavatori and the Perry Twins got to be actors yes they did yeah they got to be dead writers of Rohan mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember I actually had to search through the director's cut to find that one like five second scene with them in it just to grab a screenshot <laughs> I think the Perry sculpted themselves onto the base of the Muma Kill model as well <laughs> because they did a lot of the uh, original cut uh, yeah. models for Lord of the Rings. I don't know if they do any now. I think the last one they did was Smaug. Yeah. But... Yeah, well, the, the other one that was really cool was the actor that played Aragorn was... There was a scene where they were on top of a hill mm -hmm. uh, trying to track down a band of Orokai and they see them taking the hobbits to Isengard. Yes, we know the bit. But Aragorn kicks an orc, uh, one of the Orokai helmets. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah. You he know whenever he screams... Yeah, he actually broke his foot. Yeah. Because he kicked it too hard and he used that in the movie. I love <laughs> Method it. Method acting, right there. Now, the um, there is one last thing about the yeah. new rules I do want to bring up. And you mentioned about how you can have armies from The Hobbit fighting armies yes. from Lord of the Rings. Yes. So you can't... That's less of an issue. Alliances are more the thing. Okay. And they, they talked about this on the, the Warhammer community, how previously... Some of the best lists were very cunningly put together, but wouldn't have been that narratively or thematically um, yeah. satisfying. Yeah. Well, like, do they have a chart? Uh, they do now have a chart. Uh, I cannot re <laughs> remember where it is. Like I said, I wasn't thinking I'd be. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So this... Sam very cleverly put this tab in to keep us. <laughs> hey. I, and so, then I've even more cleverly forgot I did that. Yeah. Um, so there's your chart there to actually show who will and will not work together. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, they will all work together. Okay. But there is now a penalty. If, oh. Yes. Yeah, so you have your historical allies, your convenient allies, and impossible allies. Yeah. So impossible allies would be ones who historically yeah. never would have met. So you wouldn't have uh, Thorin's company marching out alongside the Fellowship. This is interesting as well, because you've got more than two allies as well. So it's not just this force and this force going together. You could go this force, this force, and this force going but, together. Yeah, because uh, think about it. The, la the last alliance of man and elf, uh, yeah. all, all, the, all those great moments of companies allying in the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm give, just going to very quickly read what happens for each of the three types yeah, of allies. So for historical allies... Historical allies are allowed to keep all of their army bonuses, even though the forces are selected from more than one army list. Convenient allies are convenient allies lose their army bonus and suffer no further effects. Impossible allies lose their army bonus. Additionally, all models may only benefit from heroic actions or the stand fast special rule if they are called by a hero from the same army list. Yeah. So, 
So during your construction, if you're doing impossible allies, you essentially have to construct two full forces, and that's going to shrink your forces a bit because you're going to have to pay more points for more heroes. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> right. Well, interesting. It is. It is going to be very interesting to see what uh how how people how this affects the lists people would come up with. Yeah. So the only people. Thorin's company can really work with as historical allies is the Iron Hills and Garrison of Deal. Yeah. Uh, you've got some convenient allies in there. This is just me being yeah, curious. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you've got Rivendell with mm -hmm. the convenient allies. Uh, Lothran? Lothlorien. The, oh, Lothlorien. The, the, yeah, the elves, mm -hmm. elves in the forest. All right. Uh, Halls of Thrandul. Wait. And the rest yeah. would be impossible. The black ones, I assume they are just... Oh, they're, they're, they, they are themselves. Yeah. Yeah, okay, now I get it. So Gondor with Gondor is just Gondor. Yeah. 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 Do so you yeah. like some Gondor on your Gondor? Pretty much. <laughs> and then the uh, evil side is a bit of a smaller child. Yeah, because there's, there's less of them. Yeah. But, I mean, like, there's very, very few historical allies here. So we've got the Serpent Horde. That's... Uh, like the the Haradrim. Yeah, would ally with Mordor. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Azog's Legion. Yeah, from the Hobbit, I believe. Would work with Azog's Hunters. Yeah. And the rest because... is all convenient and impossible. Well, no, the, there's one more. No, no, oh, no, no, that is the Seven the, Legion of Mordor. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the one thing about the chart is whenever you're working your way across it, uh, across the black line, it mirrors itself. So it's basically you're just picking the opposite direction whenever you go halfway across. Yeah. That's, well, yeah, that's interesting. We've seen this sort of thing done with Games Workshop games before. Yeah, uh, this is this is when Blood Angels like. started falling in love with Necrons. Yeah, uh, we don't talk about that. But <laughs> yes, uh, all in all, I think the rules have been given a good tidy up while keeping not not just the, the base, but the main body of what made the game so great before. Mm. Most of it is still there intact as it used to be, just yeah. with some little tweaking here and there. To... I'm guessing they, they went through the errata. Yeah, I just folded it in. They, they, um, they, they, they've definitely gone through each bit. I know I said some parts are verbatim, but it's when you come across little word differences, you know that they didn't, uh, just copy and paste everything. They actually went through this with a fine tooth comb. So what if if there was a spell that's been fixed? No comment. <laughs> I did spot a spelling mistake. But that's because I'm <laughs> I'm me. Yeah. All right. I mean, well. Uh, is that everything? Yeah, I believe that's everything. All right, well, everybody, I tell you what, get those comments in below. Tell us what you think of the new box set. Are you going to grab one? Are you going to grab two? Which forces from the game are really sort of jumping out to you? For me, it's the Rohirrim. Go Shire. Guard. Uh, typical Hobbit. Uh, and, uh, well, I think we will move on. We'll see you again very soon. Get those comments in. Goodbye, guys. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. You're too happy. <laughs>